Antietam Middle Senior High School, located in Mount Penn, Pennsylvania, opened in the former middle school building during the fall of 1989. Although the district makes up only a 5.3 mile radius, the school still found itself serving over 500 students between the 7th and 12th grade. With class sizes of less than 100 students, Antietam was indisputably smaller than its surrounding districts. I graduated with one of the smallest classes. There were only 42 students in our graduating class. Its students and teachers, however, would not have wished for anything different. You get 7th through 12th grade in one building and you're such a small district, you end up you know, knowing everybody that you see throughout the halls during the day. When you graduate with 50 kids, uh, you get a chance to have stories and memories with all of them. I like the fact that it's a small district. Being able to know every kid's name, you don't really get to do that at a bigger school. Every activity, every engagement, sport, the arts, academics had a very strong sense of community. There is that kind of sense of community right away. Tight-knit community, the, the small group so everybody knows everybody. Everyone knew everyone. Everybody knew each other. Everybody's friends with everybody else, everybody knows each other. It helped me fit in better. The jocks, the, the brains, everybody got along. Relationships that you built over all the years. I got to surround myself with so many great people. It's not a school district and the neighborhood you live in, it's all the same. Made you really develop great interpersonal skills and you weren't afraid to talk to anybody. Even the younger students feel the loving energy this small community brings. It's very um, kindful and loving. All my friends are close to me and it's loving. There's lots of careful people. Residing right next to the city of Reading, Antietam is home to a diverse array of students from different cultural upbringings. We were a very diverse school for how small we were. Graduates of Antietam soon grew up and sent kids of their own off to their own stopping grounds. There's three generations of, of kids that came up through that school. Three generations all going to Mount Penn. A smaller school did not mean fewer opportunities. There is truly something for everybody. Even though we're a small district, there's something for everybody to get involved in. Constantly trying these things, I'm always having to put myself out there. Two or three nights at, at Camp Adahi, the entire sixth grade class went. We also went to Spain with people from our class. We traveled to Germany with the German-American Partnership Program in 2017. I got to participate in Model Senate and meet uh, Senator Schwenk and go and do some wonderful things um, for that um, organization. It was, it was a normal high school experience. I mean, played sports. I was not the best sports player, but because our school was small, I was able to participate. I spent six years in the musical programs. Tita Musical Productions. Leading both in these clubs and in the classroom were Antietam's restless faculty and staff, whose impact shines through even years after graduation. You can go in and talk to pretty much any teacher about anything. Mrs. Hannon, what kind of teacher can you find in any school district is still looking after her students? This is Brizak, who she kind of kept me on task and wouldn't let me slide. She actually made me do the work. And, and for that, I really appreciate that. That helped me out a lot. Mr. Kerber, he was just very welcoming and so much energy and good vibes. I just thought he was an amazing teacher and he taught so well. This is Pat. She treated me with the same respect that you would treat an equal. Mrs. Peck taught me to be curious and the importance of making our voices heard. Mr. Gingrich kept everything fresh and fun. You never knew what to expect from him. Mr. and Mrs. Minter, they were amazing. Fama always messes around with me and I and I give her a hug. Mrs. Kiefer, she made me love school. Mrs. Hartman, because she's really nice and she helps me read. Mr. Edmonds, the impact that he had on me, I was you know excited to go to his class and I was excited to learn. Some of the most impactful teachers were former students themselves, such as math teacher Russell Edmonds. I first started, there were still some teachers that were here when I went here, so that, that was me. They all wanted me to call them by their first names. I didn't even know their first name. Oh, do you have Mrs. Smith? Do you have um, Mr. Ahern? They used to be my teacher too. Growing up in the community and then being able to return to that community and give back and still be a part of it. I love working here because you really get to know people and I feel like you get to make a lasting impact on kids. I couldn't imagine teaching anywhere else. This is where I was meant to be. Antietam was, to its community, the perfect little school. In May of 2023, graduating seniors tossed up their caps with current juniors ready to take their place come fall. Mother Nature had other plans.
Residing next to the middle senior high, Antietam Creek had been a source of concern for years due to its continuous minor flooding. In the summer of 2023, a project was put in place to fortify the creek's walls. This area of Antietam Creek was actually already under construction to mitigate flooding issues in the future. That project was about halfway finished, that is, until the floodwaters rushed in, wiping clean that progress after yesterday's intense storms. The storm in question began during the morning of July 9th. Starting out minor, the rains quickly increased, flooding major roads and houses. <laughs> We were starting to get maybe concerned that it might happen at the school. Ken Bunkowski, head of maintenance at the Middle Senior High, witnessed the flooding firsthand. I saw the, the rain pick up real heavy. I witnessed the creek level uh, almost breaching the bank at that point, and all the bypass pipes in that our contractor had were all out of the creek uh, at that point and piled up. The rain just didn't let up. It was faster and faster, and the next thing you know, uh, the equipment we had, a load that was 40,000 pounds, was like getting lifted up and moved. So we knew we, we had to basically retreat at that point. It went into their yard. Oh, it's going up there too. Oh, oh yeah, it's one. The water level got up about midway on the doors, um, and then all the debris from upstream breaking through the glass, and then that's when the when the tidal wave came through the building. I mean, we got to get everybody out of here. Can we still get out? I don't know. I was watching the security cameras at the school and seeing all the water come in. Ken acted heroically, pushing through several feet of water and shutting off all heating and electric to prevent a potential explosion. Despite their best efforts, no one was able to stop the flooding. Word began to spread, causing panic for both students and teachers. I was on vacation and I didn't know what was going on. My dad saw the post that was like, the school was flooding, everything was flooding. Figured that they would just clean it all up and we would go back to school as normal. When the rain finally cleared, the full extent of the damage was realized. The entire gym will not be usable. All of our first floor classrooms have been flooded. Uh, we had about six feet of water in the basement. Um, all of our boilers and equipment are gone, so it's, it's devastating. Next day, um, seeing the damage and seeing what everything that was affected, uh, I pretty much knew at that point the school would not be able to be used uh, again. This realization soon hit many, as Antietam's 2023-2024 school year was no longer guaranteed. In the days to follow, local and state officials surveyed the building, promising to get Antietam students back in school. The last thing that we want to do for this community is lose local control and, and have the state or have anybody else come in here. And we're going to rebuild and we're going to make sure our kids have a great school to go to this fall. These promises were never fulfilled. With an estimated $22 million in damages, the government denied the school nearly any financial assistance. The government doesn't really work that fast. With no help in sight, Antietam appeared to be damned. The damage is so bad, it will not be able to open because they have to do all of the cleaning up and fixing up. So 500 students, they have to figure out how are they going to go to school for the next year. With a month before school is set to begin, Antietam school administrators still don't know where classes will be held in the fall after their school was flooded July 9th. Debates soon raged on as to what was to be done with the 500 displaced students come August. The community divided, some going so far as to call out and threaten Antietam administrators. It destroyed a building, but it's also destroying a community. Finally, a plan was put in place, splitting grades 7 through 12 amongst three buildings, while sixth graders were transported to Albright College. And having been displaced from their school, having to go through a church and through kind of like an open college campus. Students, teachers, and neighbors were displaced. We had six weeks. I mean, I was here seven days a week sometimes till 9, 10 o'clock at night. On August 21st, the new year began. Despite all the challenges, students are back to school in the Antietam School District. Though happy to be back in a physical building, teachers still face many difficulties. The schedule is an issue because we don't have as much time with the students as I'd like every day. Equipment you have is for an elementary school. Really hard trying to do the things I wanna do, you know, in my classroom with the kids. We don't have our own space, our own desk. We have to lug around backpacks all day, keep everything in there. The lack of time for planning um, and not enough time in the classroom. 
The first semester went by in spite of these adversities. Looking forward to the 2024 to 2025 school year, administrators seem to have given up all hopes of restoring the middle senior high. Over their winter break, a group of seniors were granted access into the abandoned school. Here's what they discovered. From like the running water, you could see all the bumps. Yeah. You cannot see the gym floor at all. Was the student section? Oh my god! It was so thick. The glass ended up breaking, and water was rushing into this area. Yeah, glass from when the doors shattered. It literally feels like you're just walking on a beach, like on sand. Yeah, we've had some people. She had to leave like her teacher mugs behind. This chair has mold all over it. These textbooks are all ruined from the water door. It's literally a tree. Looks like a piece of paper. There again, you can see it on the door where the water was, where it reached. Oh my god. That's crazy. There are maggots all over that. There's maggots all over it. Like, as you walk, you just kick up so much, like, sediment that ended up getting destroyed. So that's how we kick up. <laughs> With no heating, electric, or sign of a visible floor, a plan has been formed to reconfigure the district's current buildings to accommodate all its students for this upcoming school year. The district announcing they're finalizing the purchase of a building on Friedensburg Road that currently functions as preschool. In the 2024-25 school year, kindergarten through second grade will attend classes in that building. Building. Grades 3 through 8 will be split in half into sections at Mount Penn Elementary Center on Cumberland Road. With grades 9 through 12 attending classes at the Mount Penn Primary Center on 25th and Filbert Streets. The district is working on renovations to turn the primary center into a high school. This plan would not come without cost. Transforming the primary center into a high school, as well as buying new equipment and textbooks to replace those lost in the flooding, is not something the district can currently afford. Without the help of its community, Antietam's future appears bleak. My class was the last one to walk out of those doors when we graduated and to leave behind all those memories in that building. Think of them not getting to enjoy that space is, is, is really sad. That's probably the saddest aspect. It's very upsetting to see that such a small public institution is at risk of um, kind of no longer existing. Two of my sisters still have a school to go back to because it was all forgotten. It's just heartbreaking. This was a devastating, you know, tragedy for them. There were so many memories just washed away.